it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Guess what? We're gonna break something today. <laughs> so it's always fun. In my engineering firm, we always like to do a 3D model and also do a real model and break them both simulated and in real life. So today we're gonna break something in real life. We're gonna do the flying wires. Scrappy's new tail and elevator stand about that tall. This carries way forward, way higher, and this is about out to here. So we have a lot more forces on the plane, so I wanna strengthen it up. These wires are unbelievably strong and overbuilt and on certified aircraft. And I wanna know how strong are they. So we're gonna pull them and break them. And then I'm gonna build some out of carbon fiber. And the reason I'm gonna do carbon fiber is carbon fiber, when you try and stretch it, if you have the correct weave, it can't stretch. You can, but it takes so much more force to stretch carbon fiber versus a steel wire that I won't ever have to re-tighten it or, or change the tension. It's just a little less maintenance. And because the loads I'm putting on it, more importantly, because I'm gonna put a 500 horse, maybe more, blast of air across the back of this plane on Scrappy, I wanna make sure that this tail doesn't move. So we're gonna break this. We're gonna make one out of this, and then we're gonna break it. Let's get to work. We just finished machining these up. I've got different components here. This is the machine end. It's got little rivet inserts, threads on the inside, even though I'm not using the threads, I'll explain why. And then this one, this one bolts into one side of the brackets I put on Scrappy, but this will be my attach point. It's got two tabs that will bolt this end. This end will be fixed, and I don't want this end to be adjustable. Flying wires, you can adjust the tension and the strength on it. I don't want this end to be adjustable, which is why it's got a slotted flap. That way when I bolt it in, it stays exactly in this position and I can make an airfoil that cannot move out of a line of the airstream on a carbon fiber airfoil. So the other end, I machined this one, so these are parts I just made up. This one just has threads on the end that I can put in an eyelet with a pivot ball on the end. And this one I can use to spin in and out, lock nut it, and adjust the tension on my flying wire or actually flying carbon fiber tube. So the way this works, the threads on the inside actually don't thread onto here. They're just a really tight fit. The reason for the threads is it gives just a tight, tiny point that actually comes up and barely grazes the carbon fiber. And that's to get the metal stainless steel away from the carbon. Now stainless and carbon actually work fairly good together, but you still can get uh, a corrosion caused by carbon and any type of metal. Uh, aluminum is really bad, but on this one, I wanna get that stainless steel away. So I've got these grooves and I'll actually pour resin inside this tube. And it won't just be resin, it'll be micro bubbles with resin blended to a runny paste. That way it still is light, but I can literally pour it. So I'll wrap duct tape around, block all the holes for the rivets, fill this tube, put a fiberglass wrap, single layer over the end of the carbon fiber to put a, a, a fiberglass barrier between the carbon and the metal. Plus that fiberglass will only barely touch the sharpest point of the inside of the threads inside this. Then when I've got that done, I'll pour resin into here. The duct tape wrapped around will keep the resin from pouring out all the holes. I'll slide this in. The resin that gets displaced by the material of the carbon will slide up the tube. And I did a simple volume change and it'll actually make the resin micro go about an inch up this bar, which means this tube is filled solid up to here and inside there. Once I do that, I can pull the tape off, drill a hole, quickly put in a rivet and rivet it. And then it can dry with the actual rivet inside the hollow carbon fiber tube 
locked in microfill and it can dry that way. So it's actually bonded and then all the threads that are in here are filled with micro fiberglass resin rivet. Hope that makes sense. But I'm not gonna bet my life on this. I feel like this is gonna be a really good solution and a cool airflow and give me a really, really strong tail section. Um, but I won't know until I test it. So I'm gonna glue this up, let it sit overnight. We'll come back at it and uh, put it on a little test jig I got on the floor here and we'll try and rip it in half and see how it holds up, make sure it can hold the weight I need it to hold. And we're gonna pull until I break it because that's the way we do things. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right, guys, <laughs> it may not be the prettiest looking thing, but uh, that's gonna work. This is my part. We're gonna make it down and dirty. Set the angle exactly at the angle of this attach point. If you look at this in a plane surface. So when it pulls, it pulls the way it was designed straight on. So I'm gonna weld up this jig. And as long as my jig doesn't break, I won't have to make fun of myself at least today. <laughs> All right guys, so while I'm bolting this together, so I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I recently sold an engineering firm Mark and I had together, my twin brother, and we did all kinds of rapid prototype. We were known as one of the fastest in the industry if you had a concept, maybe not even on paper or drafted, but an idea and you wanna get it to market. Um, and we did a lot of rapid prototype design to completion. The other thing we did that we were known for was just fastest to test. So we get in debates all the time with our engineers and it was attack everything with at least two or three approaches. One of which was on computer, which we do a lot of, and we do a lot of FEA. Um, that means finite element analysis where we can put it in the computer, stress it, pull it, test it, break it. But we like to do contests within our company and I still love that strategy today now, even though it's been a couple of years since we sold that business, that engineering firm. But that was with the engineers on a computer and the shop guys that like to sit out in the shop like me and build things real fast. And we do both and we see who could do it and test it and break it first. The trick with the computer, it's perfect for all kinds of things and has to be done. But what's really interesting is sometimes if you don't cross check your computer, you don't realize that the strains you told the computer to pull in certain ways, there was more areas of failure on the user of inputting the analysis he needed to do a test and get the results we wanted. Sounds complicated, I hope it makes sense. So we were kinda took pride and let's build it and break it, let's build it and break it and build it and break it. And breaking, <laughs> breaking things day is one of the funnest days in an engineering firm ever. So we took pride in, I have so many old parts like this from those days of different jigs, fixtures and things to break things. We'd break transmission, parking poles, um, electronic systems, gear system, dry systems. And my favorite day of all, we got to actually total vehicles. We built ground up hybrid designs, platforms for OEM companies and totaling a van, <laughs> flipping it over and wrecking it. It's a pretty good day. So I'm actually really excited today. I don't know where the failure will be. I have some theories. We're gonna pull it apart and we're gonna break it. It's the fastest way to learn. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right guys, so here's how we're gonna start. I've got this attached here. You can see the angle is perfect in line so the test will be valid. There won't be any um, binding or angled bend on it which would cause a failure, premature failure. Comes over to here. I made this little swedge real quick. I just welded this up, made a little swedge that can hook on here. And this goes into a bolt that's angled and this comes out perfectly straight as well. Then we got our puller. This puller here is 10,000 pounds. So one thing we're 100% sure, we're gonna break it, <laughs> which is always the funnest part. So here's my puller, 10,000 pound capacity. Comes across, here's my scale. I got it calibrated to zero. I can pull on it and it will adjust. It's slow to react, so you'll pull kind of take and weight and it will get there. It's accurate within two pounds. This thing is absolutely perfect for this kind of test. So hope that makes sense. Let's break something. I want you to join in this game just for fun. We're looking for failures and I'm gonna define them because there's very different failures. 
I'm going to call first sign of failure is when the plane is no longer safe to fly. That doesn't mean any of this came apart or broke when I pulled it. It means that either you tell me which one in your head <laughs> or maybe even in the comments, tell me what you thought it was and then we'll tell you, then you'll watch the video. So here's what we got. Is the nut going to fail? Is this bent metal around the end going to fail? Is the threaded connection with the compression nut here going to fail? Or is the bar itself stretching going to fail? So any first indication of failure, test done, that's the max limit. And I'm going to describe the difference. The point at which it shows failure might be this component starts to arc. If that arcs, I'm calling a failure. It should not deform. If it's starting to deform, I've already exceeded the limits I need to hit. Um, if this bolt starts to bend, that's a failure even if it didn't break. Anything that changes shape and does not return when the pressure is released is a complete failure. This bar, if it stretches, now it's about three feet long. I'm gonna let it go to a 16th to an eighth of an inch. If I release it and it doesn't go back, failure. I need that thing to return back to its original shape. So first indication of stretch of more than a 16th to an eighth of an inch and not returning failed. So those are my parameters. Which item is gonna fail first and harder? How many pounds of force is it gonna take for that to fail? Keep in mind, this is just holding up a horizontal in the wind. Would you dare stand on the back of your horizontal on the wire? Of course, if you stood on the front, you'd bend it in horizontal, but if you stood back by the wire, could it hold your body weight? And if so, how much more? And then the ultimate question, that's one failure. That's a small number of weight to get to that failure smaller. The ultimate load failure is repeated movements, stretching and stretching and stretching, maybe one, maybe two, maybe all of the components have had first indication of failure, but haven't broken, haven't come apart. And that's the ultimate failure. Um, we just stopped flying back at the first sign of first component failure. That's our number we're shooting for to find out if the carbon fiber part were, will hold up. I need to get to that or beyond. Then ultimately, when does it shatter it apart? So that's a fun game. Let's see if you can guess those two numbers. First indication, weight and absolute failure and which part goes first. Good luck. <laughs> All right guys, so while you're thinking about which part's gonna fail first, I'm gonna quickly weld up the bracket to do the carbon fiber test and we'll go back to back. All right guys, we're starting to test. Got everything welded up. I got both templates set. I want to start with 250 pounds, 37 and an eight inches. So we're gonna use that as a base. See if it starts to stretch, go to 400 pounds. 440 pounds. 37 and an eighth and a little bit. 37 and an eighth and a little. So we've got a little bit of stretch. If I release it, I think it would return. So I'm gonna just try that. Release the tension. And we're back to 37 and an eighth. So it returned to its shape. We have not failed this part by any means yet. 602 pounds-ish, 604 now. I think this is gonna break without anything flying anywhere, but I don't wanna find out. All right, guys, so at this point, I'm seeing the first sign of a failed part. This is now stretched over an eighth of an inch. That was kind of my limit. Um, I'm gonna let the pressure off and see if it comes back. Um, bolt point looks good. The head looks good. You can't tell on threads unless they let go. So I'm gonna say threads are good, bolt point good, the head looks good. The bar is stretched. So at 600 pounds, we got stretch. Let's see if it returns. All right. We returned about a sixteenth of an inch. 
we're still a 16th long. So I'm gonna call that a fail part. Though it's still structurally strong, what that means is that it's stretched to that point, it's not returning to its original location, that thing would be loose and kind of vibrating in the wind. But I'm gonna call that ultimate stopping point, non-flying, 600 pounds. I'm gonna take it further and we'll see how far this can go. Would it still be safe? Sure, but the strength, the, the bar would be loose at this point. So let's go a little further. Okay, there's 800 pounds, 826. Continuing to stretch, 316 plus. All right, 1,600 pounds. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh yeah, that's a huge jump. We're a full 37 and a half inches, so this is really pulled. There's no way this cable's going back. 1,500 pounds, we're done. This part is shot. Um, here's the secondary indication of failure. Bar went first. Secondary indication, you wanna run out here and take a quick look. Take a look at this. It's starting to arc right here. So that's starting to bend in a radius. So that is starting to lose shape. Um, let's keep going, see what goes next. This is now stretching uh, through the bolt. So the bolt hole that this is going through is now elongated. I can see a hole coming out of the side of it. So I have stretched this part right here. Um, probably a good quarter inch. Now when I'm measuring straight stretch of the bar, I'm measuring from that point, which has no indication of stretch on these components. It's just the bar that I've been stretching, measuring. Okay, we're 37 and 5 eighths of an inch. This bar has grown over a half an inch. That bar is toast. So three indications. First was the bar, second was that component. Third, is the bolt attach point is stretched. I'm not getting closer. Three failures have already occurred where this would be completely done, not usable. We're gonna go till it shatters. Complete, absolute failure. Here we go. And the absolute failure. Wow, look at this. That is cool. The complete total failure occurred at the end, which was odd. This was the third thing to show an indication of failure. First was the bar. Now look at that bar. Can you guys see that? This bar is so stretched, it has not returned to its original shape. Look at that bar. That bar was perfectly straight. We stretched it so much that this bar is completely deformed. So um, the art didn't blow out, but you can see how deformed it got. Look at the end of that. See that plate right there was curving. That used to be straight. This was letting go and this let go. So for any of you who said the threads would let go first, that was the only place that shows no signs of failure. So that is spectacular, but Anyway, here's my conclusion to this test. I'm gonna give 600 pounds as my number of first indication of a stretch without a return. 800 pounds, it was a very significant stretch with almost no return. Above that, it was just exponential. It was almost like that metal was just pulling and not wanting to go back at all. We broke down its elasticity. It's shot, it's curved, it's arced, test complete. If those of you are wondering uh, whether or not you could stand on the back of your flying wire and have it hold you, <laughs> you're good. Don't do it. But um, if you're wondering how much it would take to actually break those little itty bitty wires that look so uh, weak and scary back there, <laughs> to some, I've had people actually say that, man, are those wires strong enough? Yeah, <laughs> all I gotta do is hold that wind from moving that. 600 pounds to first indication. So it's a simple test to do. So that's why I like to do it. Let's do it on the computer. Get us in the, the ballpark, which is what I love about the computer. I wanna draw it, draft it, stress it, test it, pull it, break it in the computer 
so I know where to start the build. And then we go test it in the real world and break it to see how close we are. But what the computer does for us is let us get in the range of where we want to be. So hope that makes sense. We like both, I use both. This is way more fun. Breaking parts on a computer just is anticlimactic. <laughs> this is a good time. Let's break some carbon fiber parts, get back to work. All right guys, so I'm getting ready to, I'm actually bolting up the carbon fiber tube to do the strain test on it. And I found another failure point from the last test. If you can see that, that bolt was failing. So if I look real close, I can see it's actually got a shear cut coming through and the head has actually just started sliding away from the bolt. What's really interesting is the ultimate failure when this part shattered, um, almost everything was going at the same time. And that's actually a really awesome engineering feat. Like the trick is to not have something so overbuilt that you just added weight to the aircraft and it was unneeded weight because some other point failed first, so why would you have the extra? So the fact that this exploded, this was bent, the bar distorted, and the attached bolt was halfway through its shear off point means that they were pretty well balanced. So I'm, I'm actually blown away. That's, that's an awesome job of engineering. Okay guys, now that I've just got these machined up, these are my new ends, they're two different kinds, one for adjustment, one to lock my tube from rotating because I'm going to put a little flying wing on it for uh, aerodynamics. Tubes suck and airfoil will help. We want to know what's the weight difference. I'm trying to get a much stronger part. Um, it doesn't need adjustment. It can't stretch or ever have to, uh, that will ever loosen. And let's see how much more weight I'm going to have to carry to do that. So here's an original part. I'm going to put it on here. And what are we at? Six, eight, six, eight. So 6.8 on this one. I'm gonna pull it off. This, these ends, if you can tell, are much heavier, really thick. There's no way they'll tear or deflect. I did that to make sure I had no maintenance on that, but also to make sure I had a good connection. This is the same length as that. And uh, we're gonna put it on and see how much it weighs. So here we go. 5.6. So, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I'm actually willing to have a little more weight for what I want out of it. Now I do need to add about half of the weight of this again into it because I'm putting two thin layers of carbon on the back of it. So I need to add half of 1.8. So 0.9 ounces back onto it. How close do we get? 5.6. Plus 0.9, 6.5 six versus was our 6869. Six, so maybe add a little glue, a couple little rivets. <laughs> Surprisingly, we'll be about the exact same weight, but let's see if we can make it a little stronger out of carbon. Let's get to work. All right, guys, carbon fiber pull test. Coming up. Look at that here. 658 pounds. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to go right to 600 pounds because that's actually within limit to, <laughs> to fly the aircraft. But um, there's no rope that's stretching as I pull. So as soon as I move it, it instantly pulls all the force on it. So. <laughs> That's already tighter than you put it on an aircraft. So 69 inches exactly still. Let's keep going. <laughs> There's 800 pounds. I don't even want to get close to it. <laughs> no movement. <laughs> thousand pounds 69 exactly okay guys so at this point I don't want to get any closer to this bar I'm at a thousand pounds and I have zero deflection 
on that carbon fiber rod, which is just unbelievable. So I am more than strong enough. I just don't want to get close to measure it. All right, guys, 1,250 pounds. Carbon fiber is holding true. It really is solid, but carbon fiber, when it fails, it doesn't baby step fail like metal fatiguing over time and stretching. It just goes. 1,600 pounds, 1,720. 2,000 pounds. I'm, I'm blown away. I did not guess I would get to this point. Nowhere close without any sign of failure. All right, 2,500 pounds. I'm hearing metal creaking, um, but no sign of failure. 2,800. 3,000 pounds, no sign of failure. 3,150, 3,100, 3,200 pounds. 3,450. 3,500, 3,600, 3,550. 3,700 pounds, holy crap, I would have not have bet this one. That's insane. <laughs> Woo! about 3,900, 38, 3,900 pounds as I was adding pressure, trying to get to 4,000. Complete failure at the end of the rod. So that is a successful test. And then it fell way beyond my wildest expectations. All right guys, so where did it fail on the carbon fiber? Amazingly, not the carbon. Absolutely held up. So the fail point, was the bond joint and the rivets themselves. And the rivets didn't pull out. You can see that. What happened to the rivets is the rivets hit ultimate shear and just sheared them. So what's really amazing is that because I see no signs of carbon fiber, even fatigue, bending, flexing, which is why I filled it with a micro and a resin in the middle, was to help absolutely embed the backside of that rivet while it was wet and let it harden around it so it wouldn't move. Um, but I could add a few more rivets to this and I bet you just by looking at where it failed, this is why we do these tests. I can go through, add another five, eight rivets. I think I'm gonna push this over 5,000 pounds of uh, ultimate load force. So I'm gonna alter my part. It's gonna be really easy. I made up my other parts long. I'm gonna just drill them out, cut them It's part of the test. I'm gonna open up, add a few more holes to this. I'll do one more test later, but I could go with it the way it is and be 100% sure I'm stronger than I ever needed to be. So, success, carbon fiber wins the race. What's really amazing is when I set these two wires together, a factory one that hasn't been pulled and then the one that broke, it is now over an inch longer and the carbon fiber tube when I measured it, return to its original length and even at max pull nearly 4,000 pounds had almost no deflection at all. <laughs> okay guys, I'm way excited. All four of my little mini struts, which are the replacement for the flying wires for Scrappy, are done. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now that it's all done, you can see on the end here, the carbon fiber finishes flush with the stainless steel ends I made on this end. And this end, you cannot adjust. It's a fixed location. You can actually see it's clocked slightly different than what the little mini wing is doing. So the reason why this side's fixed is of course because it's a flying wing. And if anything came loose, I don't want this to be able to clock or rotate. So one end goes between two metal plates. And then this end is to change the tension. Now, there's a reason why I went through all this extra effort to make this carbon fiber strut instead of a flying wire. Primarily, first, 
is my horizontal and my vertical are so much bigger than a cub, so much more on the loads on it that I wanted to really get a hold of it. And so I really needed to go plus about 50% in strength. But as we know now that I've done my pull test and stress test, 800, just over 800 and some odd pounds was the fail point when the wire stretched and couldn't return. And this went to over four, just about 4,000 pounds exactly. Just as it went over 4,000 is when it broke. And that failure break test was before I added the rest of the carbon fiber, which further strengthened it. And primarily the carbon fiber that wrapped this insert that comes clear down into here, which gave another connection bonding point, which is where the failure was. So I don't want to break this, so I'm not going to test it. <laughs> 4,000 pounds is so many magnitudes over what I needed. I'm good, but it's done. It's clear coated. I'm going to put it on, but there's a couple things I want to show you. There's just little teeny details that kind of add up. But one, I can show you how flat this is. It's absolutely perfect this direction. It's perfect in this direction. The intentional place that it's not exact is I've got a slight twist to it. So if I set this on the table, you see this twist? The purpose of that is to get just a little bit of load pressure difference on one end than the other. By twisting it, you eliminate shake. So likely with how strong this is, you'd never get it at all. But if you've ever tied down a four wheeler or a load on a semi truck with a big flat strap and you just pull it tight and it's straight, that thing sometimes, likely not with this, it's really solid, but might as well be safe than sorry. Um, that wind can get it to start to oscillate and chase. So a lot of times on a strap, you'll rotate at one turn. So it's got a twist in it. So the wind on one is pushing one way, one is pushing the other and your strap doesn't go down the road flopping like that. So I did a micro version of that and put the tiniest twist on this, slight bit of air pressure on this side, slight on this side to make sure that this doesn't wiggle in the wind. So probably completely unnecessary, but it was almost no extra work to put that little twist in it, so I did. I'm gonna get them all on the airplane and we'll give it a shot. The other thing that's kind of fun, a flying wire has no compression load. This, I could put over 500 pounds on this before it starts to bend sideways. So a flying wire would just bow out. A flying wire is all tension. So as you tighten them all up, they all pull against each other. I will do the same tension on these and make it all in tension, but also in with that big old blast of this crazy prop up here. It's the other reason I went to this extra effort I'm gonna get a massive amount of blast on that tail that no cub has ever had on it. So that's what the other reason I did this. Size and prop blast. Um, I don't want this shaking. I talked a lot. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. I'm gonna go put it on. I'm super excited. Let's get back to work.